This is a quick tutorial on how to set up your Spotlight workspace. Um, so when you first uh, download Vectorworks and uh, you've got your educational license, um, you will probably by default open up in a, a workspace that is either designer or architect. Uh, we want to make sure we're working in the Spotlight workspace because that workspace gives us the entertainment specific tools like lighting, over here, rigging, event design, and so on. The basic tool palette stays the same, but it's these specific ones that changes in the different workspaces and also uh, options in this menu um, taskbar here uh, will change depending on the workspace you're in. So make sure that you select tools, uh, workspaces, and double check that you're in the Spotlight workspace um, to make sure that we're seeing the same workspace. Another thing I like to do to start with is uh, to turn off this grid. The grid is is there uh, just as a as a visual guide, and you can also turn on snapping to the grid um, as a sort of drawing aid. Um, that might be useful for some workflows. I personally don't use it, and uh, I find visually it's just in my way, really. So I'd like to turn it off. There's two ways you can do that. Uh, the quickest way is um, in your snapping um, tool set. You have this snap to grid tool. You double click that. The first time you do that, you get this warning that you can suspend snapping by holding a key. I'm just going to press OK, and um, that opens up the Smart Cursor dialog box. Uh, and in there, I've got grid options, and I can turn off Show Grid, which makes it disappear. Uh, another way of getting to that is by selecting Tools and going to Smart Cursor Settings. Again, you get the same Smart Cursor Settings. I'm just going to turn off snapping to the grid now. When you double click it, it automatically turns that on. Um, so now your workspace is empty, um, but you see this gray outline here of what is essentially a, a visual marker of a piece, piece of paper. Um, now in your design layer, that doesn't really matter that much because if we are going to output anything, we're going to do that uh, in the sheet layers, uh, whether that's a print or a PDF. Um, really, we only need to concern ourselves with the page sizes uh, when we come to the sheet layers. However, um, it can be helpful to set uh, a, a bigger piece of paper in the design layer because of some of the shortcut tools that the Zoom tool offers. For example, on Windows, it's Control 4, and on Mac, it's Command 4. If you press that, it snaps to uh, show you the full extent of the page you have set. Um, so to make that tool useful for us, um, we're going to set a page size, even though we're not really concerned with page sizes in this. And, it, and under page setup, you can set a printable area. I would usually set that to a naught, uh, which is just a, a big piece of paper, basically. I press OK and press Control 4 to snap to the extents of it. And you can see now I've got this um, big, bigger gray box, which is in uh, landscape format. And that's uh, I quite like uh, having that set so I can use Control 4 to quickly snap to the center of my page. Also, this sheet is set to be centered on the zero, zero point. You can move that sheet around. If you press and hold the hand tool, you can move the page. Um, so you're changing the, the hand uh, tool to this move page tool, and then you can grab the whole page and move it around, but I tend to leave it centered um, on zero, zero, and keep my pan tool turned on. Okay, another thing I would recommend you do right at the beginning um, is to update your libraries, uh, refresh your libraries. So in your resource manager, you have a little cogwheel here, if you press the actions uh, arrow there, you get to refresh libraries. And if you press that, it goes online and updates your Vectorworks libraries. Now this happens very quickly for me now because I have just recently refreshed it. It depends a little bit on your internet connection, how long that takes. Don't press that button if you're about to go into a meeting or you're about to show someone something because while it's updating Vectorworks, it's pretty much disabled and uh, it can take quite a long time if you haven't refreshed it for a while and uh, or you're refreshing for the first time and your internet connection isn't that fast. Another thing I would do in the resource manager is set a favorites file. Um, 
I have a, uh, a symbol library where I sort of maintain my own set of symbols that I keep using, that's lanterns, that's kinds of things. Um, and to have quick access to that, I can make that a favorites file. So I've copied it uh, onto this computer in a folder in the documents. And then um, if I go again into this cog wheel, I can do add new favorites file. Uh, and on this PC in my documents folder, I've got one for my stuff, uh, Vectorworks resources. You can see I've got a lantern library here. And if you open that, you can even have a, a sort of various um, levels of, of folders of favorites files, but um, I'm just gonna press okay. And that means in my favorites, uh, in the resource manager, I will always have access to my lantern library here where I've got sort of various bits that I've sort of edited slightly to make them, uh, you know, work the way I like. Um, so that's something I would definitely do to begin with. Um, in your resource manager, always be aware of what it is you have active. So if you want to see what's in your current document, you have to make sure you look at the open files at the moment, I haven't saved it yet, so it's op uh, untitled. Um, it's sometimes when you have several files open, you can get a bit confused uh, about what it is you're actually looking at in your resource manager. Um, so very basic things to look out for. Make sure you have your object info visible. The object info is probably the single most important source of information in Vectorworks. Anytime you click on an item, this object info here will give you all the information about that and for lanterns or trusses, it's all the attributes, uh, speakers and so on. And the navigation here lets you switch uh, between classes, layers and um, control visibility between um, visible, invisible or grayed out. Um, so that's a useful thing to have as well. If you ever find you're looking for uh, something and you can't find it, like the resource manager, if it's not there, um, you can go into Windows, Palette, and uh, turn stuff on again. And you can also move these around. You can pin this open as well so that it doesn't collapse when I move my mouse out of it. I quite like to have it unpinned so it does basically collapse itself when I'm not using it. Um, it's, uh, it's a case of what, you, you know, what you're comfortable with, how you should set this. Uh, by default, this layer scale, oops, sorry, this layer scale bit here is not turned on. So by default, your workspace will uh, look a bit like this without uh, the layer scale bit in here. Um, this area here is basically a set of shortcuts to various functions. So you can switch between classes, switch between layers, or go to the layer dialog or the classes dialog. Um, different views, isometric views, plan views, um, all kinds of things you can set in here, zoom levels. One thing that I recommend you do turn on is the layer scale. Mine has defaulted to one to 50. Uh, we tend to draw in one to 25 in theater as a standard. Um, so I'll probably leave it like that. Um, there are different schools of thoughts on how you should draw in the design layer. Some people prefer to draw everything in one to one. Um, and then only have the scale, the various scales in their sheets, depending on the paper sizes they choose. Um, there is something to be said about that because in essence, in the design layer, because it's a virtual space, it doesn't really matter what scale you're working in because you're always looking at a zoomed in or out version of what you're looking at, depending on how you zoom in or out. So really what scale it's set to is irrelevant until you put it out onto either a, a a printed version or a PDF sheet. So that's when the scale really becomes uh, important. However, it does have an impact on your label legend when you're working with um, instruments, lanterns. Uh, and I'll show you in another little video about uh, how, how it affects things. Um, you, there's a workaround, you can still work in one-to-one -one, um, with those label legends. But if you start working in one-to-one -one and then turn a label legend on, the text can seem really, really tiny um, so that's why many people work in 1 to 25, uh, many in, in lighting designers will work in 1 to 25 because it looks better for the label legends. But there's a workaround that means you can work with label legends uh, at a decent scale in 1 to 1 as well. Um, when you open a new drawing, you get various 
uh, options. You can choose a template, and there are some preset templates, Imperial metric and UK metric. Um, there is also a, uh, a template file in development uh, for Vectorworks UK, which I have uploaded onto Production Central Resources on our portal. If you go to the Vectorworks homepage on there, you'll see various links and resources. And in the resources here, I've got the entertainment drafting standards uh, currently in revision C. That's basically an attempt uh, at making a standardized file with standardized labeling and naming and uh, so on of classes and layers. Um, and when you open that file for the first time, it opens up on a sheet that basically explains the contents of the file. So it's well worth having a look at that um, because I think it's a good idea to work to a standard so that whenever you open a drawing anywhere, um, you can find your way around. Um, currently, there is no such standard that, that is adopted. Everyone does their own thing. And uh, there's certainly quite a variety of systems out there.